Pastor Pirate, with support from FOSPA, kindly just um, take us through a, a brief session on preparing for the law school entrance exam. And I'm pleased I'm also here. Yes, Linda, I was looking for you. <laughs> All right, Linda. So you could turn on your microphones. I see, I mean, your videos. I see Yabwatima. Is that a past student? Or is a current student? Hello. This is a current student. Oh, okay, because I used to have a student called Yabwatima in the 2018 cohorts. All right. All right. Um, Right, Mr. Pryor, are you are you good to go? Good morning again, everyone. I want to say a few things about how to prepare and how to. Um, I will start by saying that our preparation towards the law school exams should be approached in two phases. The first one will be the things to do before you write the exam. The second will be the things you do on the day of the exam. So let me start with what to do. I'm sorry I'm panting for breath. I had to um, do some uh, small running up. I'll start with what you do before now, and I would walk you through about five or six things to direct your mind to as you prepare for this exam. The first one is just what I said, the mental preparation towards the exam. I have been saying to a few of you that the first paper anybody writes as the entrance paper is a law of faith. You have to have so much faith, so much conf confidence, so much belief. For those of you who are Christians, so much belief in the God factor. That's where it all starts. Your mind and your will to pass. If you are not positive, if the negative vibes are more than the positive vibes, in your approach and in your preparation, there's no way you'll be able to go through such an exam, which is highly competitive. So the first thing you do, all of us, as far as we are preparing, is to be very positive. And in saying this, I have even found out that those of us who are teaching and preparing you appear sometimes to be more positive and those who themselves are preparing to write. So be positive, have that mind of you can, that mind that you will, and that mind that you can indeed land in the Ghana School of Law. I, and in, in your preparation or in your bid to do that, you see yourself even there more than seeing yourself being at anywhere. I remember when I had to prepare for the entrance exams, I, I didn't write an entrance exams to the law school. My time had no exams, but the law faculty Legon had entrance exams to be written. And this is the same approach I had at the time, very positive, very, 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 very optimistic about the papers, about admission, about school fees, about all that. And I used to tell people when we finally got there that I have been here before. And whenever I said I had been here before, they didn't really understand. But I was just letting them know that as we walk on those streets on the campus, I had taken the lead already and had walked up and down the streets. I think that I've shared with some of you um, in some other places that even the, the timetable of the school was on my wall even when I was in a student. So much faith, so much positive, so optimistic. I knew I would be there and I knew what Monday morning I'll be studying, what Tuesday morning I'll be studying and all that. Very positive. And I think that's 
a good place and a point to start with. The second one has to do with you as a candidate, identifying the areas where you are weak. We all do not have it all together. Sometimes constitutional law is your problematic area. It may be a very simple area for another person. Some of you may have challenges with um, uh, criminal law, some um, contract. Um, I know one such area most people may talk about as being challenging maybe with jurisprudence, but thank God there's no jurisprudence um, to, to worry you with the legal theories. But whichever area you find yourself as having a weakness in, preparing, forward, uh, preparing towards this kind of exam, especially now that the semester exams are over, you have an opportunity to keep hammering on that side, keep working hard on that side. Wherever you think is your weakness, do not have the same allocation of private study hours for the course. There are some that you may just have a, a, a firmer grip on, and so you may not need to spend so much time as you prepare working past questions and all that. But pay attention to your weak area and make sure that side is well guarded, well shielded. Um, number three, talking about things to do before, is to have a timetable or a strategy for your personal study. I believe that most of you have signed up on programs at certain places um, preparing you for the exam. Most of these centers are weekend um, centers or weekend programs. The one we run is a Sunday program. I know some of you attend Friday evenings, Saturday, and even on Sundays. Maybe some of them may start, now that faculties are done with exams, may start um, evening sessions or weekday sessions, whichever one it is, have a strategy. Sometimes it's good to go for discussions and get people share their opinions, very, very important. And, um, but do not let that also go against your private study. And that's where um, you would need to be strategic. Not all of us enjoy study group um, discussions, but some of us do. Not all of us are very good also with private study. Know yourself. And the one that works well for you, if you are a team player and would need people to be working with, get mind, like-minded people. Two, three, four is, is, for me, four is including yourself. Four is okay for an effective group study. There are things you hear in class other people do not hear. There are things you do not hear other people in class would hear. And it would be good for you to be sharing. Even as practitioners, and the lecturers here who um, would also bear um, evidence to what I'm saying, even in the chambers we discussed. Yesterday I was discussing a defilement case I will have to handle with some of my colleagues. And I had always seen it from a certain angle onto we discussed yesterday and I realized that there were things I was taking lightly and they were taken seriously and that's going to affect or influence the direction of the case from here. And these are practitioners who are having group discussions. How much more the learner? And in having group discussions, I would advise if it's possible and you can have connections with students from other campuses because um, you would, from different backgrounds, end up in the same law chamber, perhaps. And it's good to know what is happening on the other campuses, some of the cases, some of the perspectives that are shared from other angles by other learners and, and teachers. So be strategic and apportion your time for my brothers and sisters who um, are done with the LLB. I, I mean the regular students. You most probably, most, most likely not be working. Um, the post first degree holders may have to resume work. But for those of you who are not working, uh, who are not working, you have the opportunity of being at home or being on the campus Monday through to Friday. It is so easy 
for the time to just fly by you without you planning. And it happens so whenever there is no expectation. One of the reasons why I take so much and I place so much premium on group discussion is because by the time I go for group discussions, I would have encountered the same content material about three times. First is a classroom, I heard it, I wrote notes. Second, my personal study, I read over my notes, I read other materials, and it's as, as a second encounter with the content. The third encounter is a group discussion. And why is it important? Group discussions have a way of prepping you up for a meeting because you, you can't go, if for example, we assign you to read on a particular topic and come and talk to us about you, you can't go and tell them I didn't read. So that expectation of the meeting places a demand on you to sit up and read because you know people are going to feed on what you are going to present at the group discussion. And that will be the third time you will be going over the thing. And, and after having heard it in class, first, having sat down in your room, second, next, having spoken, heard, discussed it at the group study, you would have encountered it the topic on, on, on the third time. And that reinforces your understanding, your memory, your appreciation for uh, whatever it is. And if you are a regular student who will be on the campus and not go home, or who would even be in the house and be preparing, I would advise that you still engage a timetable for the weekdays so that you have slots for personal studies, slots for four, three, people, team, discussion online or in person, and that is very helpful. My fourth one, or yes, my number four, my first was preparing your mind. My second was uh, identifying your area of weakness. My third was personal timetable and strategy. My fourth would be past questions. As, and I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will bear witness to, to this fact. When it comes to setting questions, there's nothing new more to set. In fact, I have been saying it and I will say it here. Pick the past five, six years of past questions. Um, the past questions of any five, six years of any institution. The seventh one will be a repetition of one of them. Either um, a change of names or either uh, some few slight changes, but in substance, you are likely to meet on the seventh past question, you are likely to meet most of the questions in the, in the last six. What it means is that the laws are not that frequently changing, especially with criminal law, contract, and all that. They are not changing. Company law, a few changes. Land law, a, a few changes. But the, for the most part, the rest are not that changing. What it means, therefore, is that having worked about 10, the law school exam started 2012, I think, 11 or 12, I think. And, and this should be the 10th or the 12th, 11th or so years. If you picked all of them and you ran through, you will see that there's nothing new that is coming. The forms may be changing. Um, there may be slight changes in terms of how the questions are set. So, for example, the days of setting black and white questions where the, the answers were so obvious on prima facie, so obvious, you don't see them now. Now, all the questions are correct. And, and so what is the right answer is the best answer, actually. And you must begin to familiarize yourself with it, with, with those strategies brought on board by the law school. They have ways of certain questions which are a bit different from what we have always known. And, and some of us have started adopting that strategy. So when it comes to multiple choice, for example, your answers are all right. What you go for is the best. And what is best is per the context given to you by the question. So I would ask, familiarize yourself with all the past questions. If by this time, any one of us have not solved more than five years of those past questions, you would have to set up because you need to do a good job with that one. Just know how they set the questions. And read the questions very well. And some of us are available from now 
that you can come online, call, book an appointment, we'll run you through. And, and you can also join. It's still not late to join the ones we are running on Sundays. Very, very, very important to understand the question. I'll talk about that um, later when I talk about the things to do on the day of the exam. My fifth and last point for the things to do before the exam is to approach this exam as a competitive exam. It is not one of your semester exam. And please note that the lecturer or the person marking your work is not duty bound to read your work if he cannot read it. Why is it competitive? It's competitive because unlike the semester and there's number of people who must enter in OB. Hello, am I still here? Yes, it's better Hello. now. Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So the law school. So is, if you can take that part again, we lost you. Um, okay, so I was saying that the minister um, informed all of us that there will be about 800 or so people to be admitted. Those 800 people to be admitted or the 800 seats that are available is lower than the number of applicants. We are anticipating about 2,000 people to write for 800 slots. That would mean that not everyone would go in, certainly, because they are not, they, I don't know how they are going to run online, online courses for you. So what it means is that it's competitive and you must write to compete. And in writing to compete, your work must stand out. Ladies and gentlemen, as a lawyer, you never write anything for another person to come and interpret what you wrote in the same language you wrote it to all of us. If a lawyer writes, and another person will have to interpret what the lawyer has written to be communicated, then there's a problem. If you write and your script cannot be understood and will require another person to come and explain to us, then, then it's not law you want. Okay, so while we wait for him to get back to us, we have two of our students who finished just last academic year. Prosper and Linda, can you share with us your experience in preparing and writing the exam? Um, um, Madam, I think Prosper should go first. He's, uh, his phone is about to die, so he should go first. All right, Prosper. Hello, um, please, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I would like to congratulate all the students who are now done, Elio Bibag and all of that. This is a milestone. It's something to be proud of. So you guys should really be proud of yourselves. And I would like to thank the faculty and all the lecturers involved in organizing this. Dr. Jose Akwansa, Madam Susanna Afutu, Mr. Oparewiridu, everyone who has agreed to come here and speak, Mr. Bernard, Pastor Randy, the Reverend, I would like to Hello? Hello, who is speaking now, please? Um, um, Susan, sorry, I, I, okay. I, was, I was taking off. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, you may resume. Yes, please. Um, I, I think I was making a point on the fact that it's competitive. And so you must write to stand out. Your work must be unique in terms of your handwriting. And I'm sure some of you by now would have noted that I talk a lot about handwriting. If we are marking 2,000 people for 800 seats and your work cannot be read, I, I don't know how you will go through so please, let's note that one. Um, I will talk about that um, more when I'm... And, and so let me just quickly shift to my, my second phase, which has to, talk, which has to do with um, what to do on the day of the exam. What to do on the day of the exam. Number one, get there on time. Um, that day may be the day that it will rain so much at your, at your area. Your house people may, may let it rain so much only in your house, <laughs> you can't get there on time. 
I beg you, I beg all of you, please get there on time. Last year, um, I know there was an arrangement for those on campus to go together um, in one transportation. I don't know what the um, um, law students union may plan for members at this point, or indeed even the faculty, but I would, I would suggest that whether you are close to Legon, and I'm sure it will be written at Legon or UPS, one of them, endeavor to get there on time. Endeavor to get there on time. And um, number two, when you get there, ignore all other people. You will see so many people. You will have so many people, some driving, some uh, being driven, some riding some so many people everyone is getting in psychologically it may play on you and you'll be asking yourself oh son of man can i make it would i be part of the numbers it plays on your mind and you start seeing things that are not in existence and those that are in existence you start ignoring them but i would entreat all of you please the one you are afraid of, who you think would pass, is also afraid of you. When you see the crowd and you think there are too many, they are also seeing you and thinking you are also too many. And everybody is afraid of everybody. Ignore every person. Psychologically prep yourself for that kind of environment. Don't be considering what God has ignored. See yourself as moving in writing and passing and don't be scared of the numbers wherever it will be written don't be scared of the numbers just ignore every other person but as you ignore as you ignore between now and that time between now and when you enter the exam room ladies and gentlemen put your ears on the ground for some very strange reasons a lot of the times the things people hear and the predictions people make for some strange reason, so I don't understand, but it so happens that when they go, they find the predictions to be true. Pay attention to any prediction that comes. Don't, don't underrate anything. Don't go fishing. Don't go paying money. Don't go um, trying to join the WhatsApp group where you are sure some things will drop. I'm not advocating for that. But as you sit down and you study, and as you go for group discussions, as you hear people say, pay attention to this, pay attention to that. Ladies and gentlemen, you too, pay attention to that. If you come across any question, you hear anything and you want to find out from any of the lecturers as to how to go about that, and, and you're not sure how to handle that kind of question, please feel free to come to us and we would assist you. But do not underrate the hearings. But please don't be a victim of a scam. And don't be a victim or a corporate of a more practice. When you enter the exam room, you are likely to be given two different colors of scripts, at least from past experience. This is what they have been doing. A particular color is earmarked for a particular question. And this is where people start failing. As lawyers, one of the things you would always encounter is instructions. In the chamber, your senior will give you instructions. At the courtroom, the court or the judge sometimes can give you directions. Instructions are very sensitive to this work that we are doing because you would always even take instructions from your client. Your client will come and give you instructions. So please pay attention to instructions when it comes to exams, just as we do in practice from clients and from our seniors and even from the judges. If the instruction is that answer question two in the green booklet, ladies and gentlemen, don't be unique. We appreciate your sense of innovation, but it is not at this time. Don't innovate your own instructions. And don't try to be unique that the faculty said we should let our work stand out. So as for my work, even though they say the green booklet, I want mine to be in the pink. Hmm. Anyway, I, I, hope you, <laughs> I hope you are paying attention. Yeah. <laughs>
you are following, please pay attention to instructions. Two sets of booklets will be given to you, and please follow the instructions. Mr. Pari Reji. Yes, please. Not to, uh, just to chip in. I think mm. you, are, you are being light with <laughs> what you are saying. Uh, you, have, you have to call a spade a spade and tell them as it is. Don't <laughs> add what you've not been, don't add anything to the question. You've not been asked to, to add anything. I think you are being very diplomatic and light about it. Well, I think um, uh, they have to know, they, they have to, you ha they have to be told. Now they are matured enough to handle the truth. Mm. I think they should be told as it is. Mm. Uh, very you, well. you are not, very you've well. not been, don't do what you've not been asked to do. Exactly. You are in simple. And Thank you very much. <laughs> welcome, welcome, my sister. Let me quickly add, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this part closely and carefully. The law school exams is passed both in form and in substance. The form has to do with just what we just mentioned. Put question one in this color. Don't fail. Regardless of the substance and how convincing and how compelling your arguments are, in substance in your answer if you fail on form answer question one in this booklet and you fail the form alone will take you out i have told you this is competitive and the competitive nature of it makes it appear ladies and gentlemen i use that word advisedly appears to be that the approach is more of who to fail and not so much who to pass. Who are we to fail? Who are we to disqualify? And not so much who are we or who is to be passed. And that means that both in form and both in substance. The form here is you obeying instructions. The form here is you writing in the appropriate and earmarked script. The form here has to do with you and your handwriting. The substance has to do with the relevance of the things you have argued on paper. The two must be successful for you in order to cross over. So pay attention to the instructions. And finally, when you open, they say start work and you open your book, please read over the questions. I have said this in class so many times, five times. Don't read a question and start Read the question the first time, read it the second time, read the question the third, the fourth, and the fifth. By the time you have read five times, you have different layers of understanding in terms of that question before you. Each time you read, there's a certain layer that is revealed. There's a certain layer that is opened to you. There's a new discovery and a new attention, uh, a new um, um, word that jumps at you. There are key words in the question that turns everything around for you. You are used to Iraq, but I have noticed that the trend these days is not asking you to so much advice. They may ask you specific questions. What charges would you prefer against this accused person who are you going to charge and what is your reason? That is not a question inviting an Iraq approach, area of law, whether or not, that, that's not it. So please be at, and you can only notice these when you are very, very, very thoughtfully and carefully approaching the questions. I beg of you, please take your time Start work doesn't mean start writing. Start work has never meant start writing. Start work only means start reading. So when you read it, read it over and over and over until you understand as a lawyer, don't write. And if you'll be given, I don't know the time I look at, whether 45 minutes for a question, uh, I'm talking about the essay question. I don't know if it's 45 minutes, but it pays to use some 10 minutes to have an outline written on your um, um, on the question paper, um, and then you know finally you translate your planned and your outline work into the main um, um, the question paper.
finally, um, I would say pay attention to paragraphing. There, there's nothing as refreshing as a student whose work is paragraph by paragraph, even separated with. Okay, so the, the paragraphing bit has to do with you having to paragraph your work in terms of spacing out your work. So when you are done with one paragraph, it, it's nice to jump a line and go to another line and then leave some lines in between your work so that it's so beautiful. At this point, I'm not expecting any one of you to start um, a new question or a new answer on, on an old page, like some of you were doing in project work. How can your chapter two immediately come after chapter three on the same page? How can you start a chapter two on the same page where chapter one is ending? You must go to the new page. So these are some of the things that a marker or an examiner may see and put aside your work because you can't be in level 400, write a law paper and you, your, 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 you are starting a new question on an old page. It's not acceptable. Stand out, write clearly, paragraph your work, space them out, follow the instructions, relax, and believe that all that you've done so far um, in the last three years, four years, is enough to prepare you for admission to the law school. I will end here, and if you have questions, you may please ask me, and I would um, humbly ask that you, um, you, we do the questions and answer. Let's just ask right. you to stood down for me. I have to. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. Faridu. Yes, Suzanne. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll just give a few minutes to our alumni who joined us to share their experience. I know Linda is with us, Prosper and NHK. So just in a few minutes, um, because our speaker for the next session is also with us already, and we okay. are eating into his time, as at now. Um, Prosper, what words of advice do you have for these students? In a few minutes, is, is Prosper here? Madam, unfortunately, Prosper just left. I, I don't know. Um, okay, no problem. Don't worry. Don't worry. Linda, Linda, yes. What words of advice? Okay. Okay, okay Prosper. Yes. I don't know if everyone to hear what was said before, but congratulations to the final year. It's coming this far, or it's something you should be proud of. Like, <laughs> this is a milestone. And I would like to thank the faculty and the lecturers for creating this opportunity. They did it last year with my set, and it was really helpful. And I know it's meant to be helpful again for this set. So thank you, Dr. Jokonta, Madam Afutu, Mr. Opari, Madam Yunis, the Reverend, speaking, Mr. Bernard. Yes, Prosper. OK. Uh, um, so getting into preparations for the entrance exam, I heard that it will be taking place in September. That means this set has a lot more time to prepare. So congratulations. Okay, Linda, what do you have for them, Linda? Okay, um, so first of all, just as Prosper was saying, thank you for organizing this again. Um, last year, when I joined this meeting, I honestly didn't have any plans of writing the entrance exams. The only thing I had in mind was doing an LLM. So I literally came to sit down to listen to the talk for LLM. But then after leaving the place, there were a few things that I learned that I applied to. Uh, I applied when I was writing the entrance exams. And one of the things were the God factor. Honestly, um, when I getting into the law school, I realized that a lot of people that are in the law school, sorry to say, are not as bright as you think they are. Normally, you you think that everybody in the law school like got there academically or something. But then when you look around and you look at people, you realize that it is actually God's grace that a lot of people are in the law school. So if you are writing the entrance exams, the one thing I'll tell you is that before you start your journey studying and all everything, put your studies into God's hands because grace really makes a difference in people's life. For instance, some of us didn't think, we didn't even know that there will be that sort of 50% um, uh, cut off mark and then all those things. But then the 
I uh, the Ghana School of Law is very is unpredictable and all those things. So even if you are learning as as much as you can, you also have to remember to pray and ask God that if even if you can do it fifty percent, God should guide you and give you that plus one to be able to move forward. Um, I don't know if some of you know, but then right now the law school is doing what they do 50-50. That is section A. You have to make sure you get 50% in section A and then get 50% in section B. That is being said, I get 25% um, in the objective paper and then get 25% in the section B. That, that will be the way for you to actually get into the law school. So for you not to feel like you will be okay with just passing with section A, I would say that learn the theory aspects also very well. As much as you learn the section A, learn the theory aspects also. And then Mr. Reddy mentioned something about clarity. Honestly, when you get into law school, everybody, all your lectures will let you understand that they all know what you are already writing. It's not something new to them. IEC, the lecturers in IEC are, uh, the people that are marking their papers are people that have already been lecturers for years. They are high court judges, Supreme Court judges, and all those things. So there is, is there is nothing that you say for them that they've not seen before. So you have to remember to be as simple as possible. Like if if, if the paper is requiring you to say a, just say a. Don't go and write big English and all those things like or legalese and all those. Things. It will not help you because they are trying to mark as fast as they can to bring out the uh, results. And then they are trying to fail a lot so that they can pass people that are in their, um, are in their uh, the number that they want. So you have to remember to be as simple and then uh, as clear as you can be. The other thing is that application. I didn't know, I think when I was in LLB, the thing I suffered most was my application. I was mainly doing more, more of speaking the law and not more of like trying to apply what the law is to the questions. But then you realize that when you apply, I realize that when you apply the law directly to what you are saying, you'll be able to get to the conclusion that you want. So don't forget to apply the law. If the question asks you something and you know that maybe uh, under a uh, contract law, a person cannot accept uh, something due uh, silence, it's not acceptance and all those things. Remember to just state, state the law as it is. Don't go and then apply it to the question. Just state the principle, apply it to the question and then just move on. If you, do, if you don't do that, time will beat you. And also when you get to the examination hall, as Mr. already said, and you will meet a lot of people. I remember when I got there, I actually started panicking and then I had to get somewhere to compose myself because when I entered the, the room, there were almost thousand plus people in my entrance in my examination hall, which was, and it was very scary, but then wow. So you don't have to focus on. Um, hello, sorry, I got cut off. Sorry, yes, your line dropped. Yes, um, I, I was saying that um, when you get to the entrance, so there are a lot of people there, but then forget about everybody, just pray and face your paper. Just as Mr. Reed said, you will definitely be given two different papers to answer the questions. And then um, when you are given the two papers, question one will be on one of the papers and question two. So always check instructions and then pay attention to detail. If you don't, you might fail because... If you answer question two on the wrong paper, they might actually cancel your entire uh, paper or something because they want to fail you. So that's about the exams. Just relax. And then also before you go and write the exam, make sure that um, your personal studies, personal studies is very important. I am I'm somebody who does not like groups, but then I had to manage and then um, study with groups during the uh, preparation because your personal knowledge is not enough. But then before you go to a group study, make sure that you, ha you have at least studied something like on your own personally. 
before you go to the group study because if you know something, something new it's rather ask to what you already know but then if you go to the group study first and then you listen to whatever they say when you are going to study you don't have a mind of, of your own because you've already been influenced by whatever was said at the group studies so it's like you particularly have just one mind but then if you have your own mind and you go and hear someone's own you realize that oh right this is different from what i thought i can actually add it to what i already know so that's one other approach to it so make sure you do personal studies a lot of personal studies before because trust me a lot of your friends started studying last year and then probably are, they are just starting to learn you'll be intimidated by them because they'll be saying a lot of things that you don't even remember because you studied it in level 100 or something but then make sure that you yourself have personal knowledge of it before you get there because i actually the first time before i started studying i joined a group and honestly i wanted to cry i was literally in tears because i didn't understand what was going on everybody was saying something that i i haven't read on and so I just left the group and I, I did personal studies for like two weeks before I ventured into the group studies. And it really helped me a lot. And as Mr. Redu said, if someone says, pay attention to this, honestly, pay attention to it because you'll be surprised. There, there are some, some groups that you have to carefully pay attention to them. When you start learning, you hear of them, pay attention to those people. So basically that's what all I have to say for now that I just I just hope that what I said is um informative and then like something came out of it so yeah madam please that's what I, I have to say thank you thank you Linda as you can all deduce from what Linda said it's not too late to start preparing for the law school entrance exam Linda is a clear example of somebody who hadn't made up her mind at the time she finished her final paper she didn't think that she was going to attempt the Makola, the law school entrance exam, but she decided after the day we had a program that let me also learn and attempt. And she did get in on her first attempt. All right. So if you have been a consistent student who has put in the work, I, I had the opportunity to teach Linda in first year and final year. And I know that she was a consistent student who was putting in the work just like Prosper. So if you know that you're one of such students, you can just make up your mind from today that I want to attempt and write this Makola, you know, Ghana Law School entrance exam because we have, there are a few um, lecturers here. I want to give the opportunity to talk. Mr. Paul Atiemo, do you want to say something? Uh, hello, Susie. Yes, Paul. Yes, uh, I'm glad uh, I came in before the lecture or the program or even came to an end. But uh, just as you mentioned, I would also want to add my voice to what is going on yes, presently please. in this particular yeah. event. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure a lot has been said, and uh, I would also uh, add to it that uh, just as uh, uh, when you write in your exams, uh, when you get both of us who would want to go into the law school, uh, I also recently came out from the law school. I've gone through the system and then uh, have uh, realized how the system operates. So I had a practice of learning how to plan my work before I go ahead and then answer it into the answer booklet. And uh, I took advantage of the few minutes they gave us. Uh, you know, when you enter the exam room, you will be called upon uh, after sharing the script and you are made to turn it over, uh, you'll be asked to read over the question. So for the period that uh, we are given, say about uh, 10 minutes, for however it be, uh, you just have to learn how to try and plan, select the questions that you would want to answer. And uh, if you are able to plan your work out well, uh, you will spend a lot less time thinking out the answers before um, you actually, whilst answering, so that you don't spend a lot of time trying to think it out, what is supposed to be here, what is there. I also want to suggest uh, about, I'm sure a couple of things have been mentioned about following and observing instructions on your answer booklets. Uh, a particular year that uh, was ahead of us, and I'm sure many of us have heard about uh, this instance of uh, match to the bar. Uh, it was almost about then that we were in the law school. And uh, in a particular year, for instance, they gave out 
uh, questions. And then uh, for the years preceding, it has always been answer question one and any other three. But for that particular year alone, nobody knows what the plan was. They mentioned answer uh, question two and three and four. They said answer all questions except question one and five. And can you imagine a lot of people proceeded to answer question one and then because they have always known that it's supposed to be a, a compulsory question. So for those who were able to or who answer question one and five, the understanding is that uh, they are going to lose out on uh, uh, say 25, 25. You lose out on those marks and then uh, you'll be, obviously you are going to fail because uh, the marks 50% until I came to a law school, I never knew it was such a difficult thing to get. I also want to mention that uh, we shouldn't spend a lot of time whilst answering the question. Uh, we call it overflowing the question. Uh, remember, the more time you waste on a question, especially in the exams room, uh, you may end up getting about uh, 20 there, but you may end up getting five or 10 in uh, the other uh, question, as aspects of the question. And it means that you would have filled the paper. So don't spend a lot of time, just go straight to the point as you've been mentioned, it has been mentioned to you. And then uh, you should be successful once uh, you are able to tackle both questions or all questions on both sides, that's in the part A and part B. And uh, I'm very sure it has also been mentioned to you about, um, don't try to impress anybody in exams. I've always been a believer in the saying, they say exams favors the fool, uh, however it goes, but don't try to impress anybody with your legal needs. And uh, I heard the last speaker mention that when uh, you are trying to be like legalists, the people who are reading, going to mark your script are very serious minded people. Uh, they have seen it all. And so if you try to impress, use a phrase, it may sound nice, but uh, it's not supposed to be. Uh, you just go straight to the point and then deal with the subject matter. And uh, I trust that uh, you will be fine. I think uh, for now, that's what uh, Susie, I would want to say for now or share. All right. Unless cool. there are any questions. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. Thank you. Well, Anaya, do you want to say anything that hasn't been said already or? Um, I just want to emphasize, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I think everything that needs to be known has been said. Um, forgive my noisy background, but I just want to add, and um, not add, but emphasize the God factor. Um, it's grace. So you've come to level 100, level 200, level 300, level 400. You can do it. This is not something beyond you, but then you need the grace of God. Um, I think Linda mentioned it, and... I just want to emphasize is that at this point, if you are not close to God, <laughs> get close to him and, and lay out your plans to him. And I'm sure that he will, he will let you succeed. So that's all I wanted to add. And yes, please. Thank you.